and welcome to the Codependent Knitters. This is episode 47. We're almost as old as me. <laughs> Sorry. Um, this is my friend Dawn. And, and that's my friend Lisa. And together we're the Codependent Knitters. Uh, we originated in Sarnia, where Dawn still lives. But I, due to husband's job, had to leave and I live in Gravenhurst. So this is why we Zoom. <laughs> we are now distance podcasters. Yes, distance podcasters. Yeah. Um, to everyone coming back, thank you for joining us again. Sorry it's been a while. And for those who are just joining us, good to see you. So yeah. What else have we got? Uh, well, it's been a while because you were busy moving. I was busy moving. You were busy with other things. I don't know if you want to. Yeah, well, I mentioned in our last episode that um, my mom had come to live with us. And so she came to live with us because she had dementia and we wanted to have her living with us and keep her safe. And we thought it would probably hopefully be for a few years. And then a few weeks after she got here, um, I've already made this public, so it's not, <laughs> I'm okay to talk about it. But a few weeks after she got here in August, we found out that she had stage four colon cancer. Um, so she stayed at home with us. We had amazing palliative care here in Sarnia. It just blew me away. Um, everything we needed for mom to be at home, nurses came to the house. They were on call 24-7. Um, and mom passed away a few weeks ago. Um, so uh, she was at home with me and she was comfortable and yeah, it, it was the, the best of a bad situation. So it's been a rough couple weeks. It's been a rough couple months. Um, it's, I'm up and down. Today's a good day. I can talk about it. Um, I just want to thank everyone for the messages. Um, there's a few people that you know, have, have lost their mothers and sent me some really, um, just really supportive messages and, uh, you know, shared advice uh, and things that really helped. And, you know, a lot of the, the people we've met through knitting, Lisa, like through this podcast, the support, the friends we've made is just amazing. And I've really felt that. And um, it's just been, uh, it's kept me afloat as knitting has. So thank you to everyone. And um, knitting really is therapy. It was for me. So for, you know, a couple of months, that's all I could, I was at home with mom. I, I couldn't leave her because she needed assistance. And I did a lot of knitting and um, it just, it was some days it was all I could do. So, and Lisa, you, you were busy with your house move. Uh, but knitting helps with stress as well, right? Even if it's just, I think you, you'll probably talk about that, but you chose just a really simple project. Yeah. It's, yeah. And you know what, the, what you're saying is yes, knitting is therapy, but it's amazing how many people you get, like friends that you get out of that and a community. That's been the hardest thing for me with COVID is because I love going to go places knitting you know what I mean like going to London we go to there we go to St. Thomas yeah. we go everywhere, right and now yeah who won't knit with me <laughs> so yeah that, I think that's the hardest part of this so we have a lot to get through and I'm gonna go through some of it really fast <laughs> and um I have a lot of acquisitions because it's been a couple months. I didn't buy this all in the last few weeks, but it's been a couple months and I think I kind of shopped my feelings some days. So <laughs> I also ate my feelings. That's not good either, but whatever. We do what we can to cope, right? We have a couple of knit alongs going on. I mean, we're not going to draw any prizes today. We're going to leave everything open because we haven't really been able to pay attention to those our ourselves. And so I think we'll leave them open probably till the end of January. Does that sound okay? No, that sounds perfect. Um, yeah. There's the, the Robbie Lachlan knit along, which we've left open and the 52 weeks of socks, which is always going on. Those might be the only two. Yeah. yeah. We had talked about a couple of others, uh, but we didn't actually start them. So maybe we'll just wait till after Christmas. Sound good. And then start. Yeah. Let's okay. start everything after Christmas. That's crazy here. <laughs> okay. 
Look at how festive this looks. I just realized my Christmas tree is there, my Advent sock. It's crazy over here. I know, and I'm, I'm <laughs> this is the most boring background, but this was my office where we used to record. And it was like a caramel brown color. And, um, and then it became mom's bedroom. And so before I turn it back into my office, I just, I need to change it. I need to, you know, make it feel like a different space and it needed to be painted anyways. So it's been repainted and I, yeah, it's been repainted and I haven't moved everything in yet. So it's very echoey, but it's great light. We've got great color going on today. So yeah. Perfect. My festivities are all out in the other room. <laughs> yeah. See, I'm in the dining room. I'm in, nice. the, I'm in the middle of it all. I've kicked everybody out of the house since podcast. And I think if you look really closely, you'll see the cat right there. We have a two-sided fireplace. So he, yeah. Sweet. So yeah, we'll start a new knit along, I think in January. Perfect. Something. Do you, uh, do you want to start with finished projects? Yes. Cause there's a lot of them. Okay. Well, I don't have a lot of them. Do you want me to do a couple and then you? Because then... I don't have as many. You go. Okay. And then it won't be all me, the all me show. I've been wanting to show this FO for a while. I haven't photographed it yet and I was waiting till we podcast. But it is a Robbie Lachlan design. It's oh, the granular, yeah, granular shawl. And it's gorgeous. It's a great pattern. It's textured. So how's this looking? Looks good. Yeah, it's really good. So it's knit. I forget which end, but it's knit. You start at um, a tip and increase, and then you pick up along the point of the triangle and knit the other way. Oh, which is really yeah. So it's a little different, and there's five different sort of patterns that you repeat with stocking stitch in between. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's just a big, cozy, mm. I just love it. And the texture, texture does so much for a plain color, right? It just, it's just awesome. I find though, when you do a texture, you're sometimes better off with a plain color. Oh yeah. I find sometimes yeah. if you use, you lose a lot of it, depending on the, whether it's variegated or not. Do you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like, I just, I love the yeah. traditional texture on plain you know, plain gray, obviously yeah. that's my favorite, but <laughs> yeah, yeah. It looks good. So this is Estelle, it's Estelle Merino, no, Estelle Alpaca Merino worsted. Ooh. And the color is, it's a number 525. It's like a, just a medium gray. And I got this at Heaven is Handmade. They, they have this in stock in different colors and, um, they actually ordered in, they were out of this color, so they ordered in some for me. And I think I used, it's not the called four yard, but I think I used, I went into the fifth skein. I think I bought five and I went into the fifth. I haven't weighed it yet um, and put the details on Ravelry, but. Um, so it's a big one then. Pardon? It's a big shawl. It's a good size and it's worsted. And I'm also a really loose gauge, right? So, yeah. So I've just been, I have to take pictures of this now and get this on Instagram and in my project page in Ravelry. So that's my first FO. And I'll show you one more because it's just amazing. Oh, that um, is amazing. This, this is the Simply Soft hat and it's the So Good um, edition of the pattern. It's by Amanda Kafka, who is the Crafty Jackalope. And she sells these kits on her website. So the Simply Soft hat pattern is available on Ravelry, um, but to get the pattern with the, the sort of pattern for the embroidery, um, that's available with the kit. I don't know if she's gonna release it separately in the future, but right now you'd have to order the kit to get it. Or you, uh, you know, do your own embroidery, but um, which I'm gonna bring close up. Isn't that adorable? It's gorgeous, you did a fabulous job. And I love it. I had to redo a couple of them. There's a couple of the, I had a couple of French knots that kind of looked like um, growths. <laughs> they, they looked pretty horrid. They were kind of big and 
I got, then I got the hang of making them. So I would just say, if you're going to try this, do a little swatch and just test the okay. daisies and the French knots beforehand to get the hang of it. Um, and it's easy to rip out because it's, yeah. And then the, it came with, okay, so the yarn in the kit is Katia Concept um, Cotton Merino. So that's one of those tubular type blow in. I don't know if you can mm -hmm. see here, Lisa. Am I too close? Yeah, so it's like a, a cotton mesh tube with the merino blown in. It's crazy soft. It has beautiful halo. So it, the kit came with this, I think it's light pink, it's called. And then the Katya Concept 50 mohair, which comes in this little, uh, on this little uh, bobbin. Now, this mohair, I believe, is synthetic. Okay. Um, I can't remember. So yeah, but it comes with, you get the matching pinks. And then it came with just a small amount of the same cotton merino, just in this natural color for the embroidery. And I got lots left, so. It's pretty. Yeah, and it came with a pom-pom. I like the pom-pom. I haven't just, I haven't sewn it on yet. Oh, very cool, I love the pom-pom. Does that look cute? That looks amazing. I thought about, I had a pink pom-pom in my stash, but it's too pink for this hat. I like it with the cream, yeah. Yeah, yeah. the cream. And then the cream goes with the embroidery. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's, again, the Crafty Jackalope is her website. I'll put it in the notes when you drop down the arrow on our YouTube on our video. Uh, she's in BC, I believe. She's Canadian. And she has patterns as well as a lot of kits. She sells kits and yarn in her um, shop as well. I love the jackalope. So I love it. So, so that's me. So my turn. Okay, so mm -hmm. I bought this yarn way back when. It's the Plucky Cambridge. And I think I've actually knit myself a winter coat because this thing weighs over a pound. And I did the, um, the Ramona in the smallest size because this is bulky and it calls for, so it's just, it is so nice. gorgeous and it's so heavy. It's, remember I bought it at the um, knitting estate sale that you, I think it was my mom, Adrian and I went. I don't think you were there. I think you were in Winnipeg or something. Mm. But I bought it and it's the Plucky Cambridge. So it's merino and cashmere. And it is, I've wore it a couple of times after I, t I had to block it because with it being such a thick wool. So I blocked it and it took like four days for it to dry. So that's how heavy it is, but it is gorgeous. And I've worn it as a jacket. Yeah, you could. Oh yeah. But it looks good. I love the ribbing. It's just kind of a broken rib. Looks nice. Nice. Yeah. So, and it's a blue gray. <laughs> So yeah, that was uh, that's one I absolutely love and I've worn. And if it is ever laying around the house, it usually has a gray cat on it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I have another hat. I was in, after I did that hat, I was in a hat mood. So I did another um, Olive and Jack. I've done a couple of these. Oh yeah, yeah. And this is uh, Manos del Uruguay, the Serpentina base in the color is Sarah Bernhardt. So it's got some light blue, blue gray, a little bit of a burgundy in there. Hmm. It's got a little pink too. Yeah, I'm wondering, I have my light on and I'm wondering if that's throwing a warmer glow. I'm trying to, there, I don't even start tilting. But yeah, it's really, it's really pretty. And um, this is not the called for yarn. So I've done, this is my third of these hats in this yarn. So I've already, figured out the modifications for this yarn but the pattern calls for DK I believe and this is like a bulky so you need a repeat of 16 because the there's two cables that are staggered so if you're going to modify it you have to keep that in mind or you could just repeat one cable but if you want to stick to the pattern you need a multiple of 16 stitches um, so I cast on 80 stitches. This will all be in my Ravelry project page. 80 stitches. I used a 4.5 millimeter needle because that's how loose of an knitter I am and, and on the bulky yarn. 
And I did three pattern repeats before the decreases. And um, I used, like there's a tiny bit left, so it uses almost a full skein of the Serpentina at my gauge. And then this as well would look really adorable with a pink. I'm thinking of that one when I saw it. Yeah, because it picks up the pink, right? Mm -hmm. um, or a gray. Gray would look really good too. This is a small one. I have a bigger one here. Oh yeah. This is this is kind of a blue gray, and it perfectly matches the gray. It does. Seen. It yeah. does. It looks nice. Yeah, and these palms. I have some palms that I've bought in, in the past that have um, strings, and then I have some of these that have the snaps. So you sew this bottom part onto your hat. The only thing is with bulky yarn, like the snap is kind of sewn on the outside of the hat. So you, you take it off for washing, but you pretty much have to always wear the palm or else you'll have this little weird button at the top. Like the one yeah. elastic that you pull through and you put the button inside. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, you could, you could do that because you could just sew elastic onto the, mm -hmm. no, it's pretty tight. Nah. <laughs> not with this, not with this palm, maybe other palms. Um, and I have one more hat. I'll do another hat. You know, what's funny. It's, for when you get need knitting therapy, you do hats. You you do well, hats and socks, and I do big things. <laughs> <laughs> I um oh I got another third. I'll show you my other my way up my other therapy project. Well, it's just that I saw this crafty jackalope hat right, and I posted that I'd bought the kit for it, and then I had a, a friend who wanted a hat, so I was kind of talking to her and, and mentioned. Um, this one that I'd knit and showed her the yarn and uh, so then I thought I'm just gonna knit this because it's been in my stash to make me one forever <sighs> so then I was like yeah there's a, I love knitting hats but you know what I've been wearing them when I go out for walks because I'm uh, oh totally, that's awesome because that was I'm always right you don't wear them no because eh, but I like them now for walks so then I just started this the other day um, did I write down what this is? This is the Sidewinder Beanie. Okay, it's the Sidewinder Beanie by Aspen Leaf Knits, Ginny Jones. Can you see the design? Oh yeah, there? yeah. Okay. So it's, it's this twisty section. It's really neat and it's actually fairly straightforward. And um, this yarn was also old stash. It's Misty Alpaca. It's a hand paint chunky alpaca and it's 100% baby alpaca so it's crazy soft and again I think this hat's going to need a pom-pom um maybe a nice oh, gray I like that I have a, yeah I have a whole giant bag of pom-poms so I'll find oh because there's also a light pink in here too so I mean even the pink no not that pink <laughs> gray gray or something so the oh and this colorway is called delphinium um, oh, and I used a five millimeter needle. I think that's pretty close to what the pattern called for. And the pattern, um, it is on Ravelry. It's a paid for pattern. And it, there are two, you get two versions. So there's a chunky, I think, and a super bulky. So it is meant for, for bulky or chunky yarn. So super cute. Do you have another FO? I do. I have this. I'm gonna have to unwrap it. Okay. okay, so when I get, when I can't think straight to knit, I do blankets. <laughs> like when I'm just busy and whatnot. So I have, um, I knit this and it took, um, it's pretty thick. I don't wanna unwrap it cause it's, so it's folded to it's over gorgeous. this way. No one, it's, yeah, it's folded three times and it's wrapped around. So it's, fa it's fairly big. And I actually used a cone of the nugget color and a cone of the Oxford in the Holst garn. So that's the, the pattern, super soft. Yeah, that's the super soft. It's, it's you can, it's the old pattern. You can knit the camp Afghan. I did one for, I did one for myself and my daughter. It's gone. It's in a room somewhere but she won't let me have it back. So I was in the middle of doing this one and I thought, you know, okay, cool. So I did this one and I actually ordered more yarn to do another one. Hold and it up and hold it still so we can see, cause it's real, it's got a rib, right? Like a, nice. 
Yeah, so it's, uh, so basically I had to figure out, because this is two strands of the nugget color and so is this. So I had to make sure that I had enough to do the other end. And this is the two yeah. tomorrow. So yeah, it's, it's soft, it's been washed. It's, um, but it's the combs, right? So it's got a lot of oils still left in it. So when you wash it, it the spinning oils come out. Like right. you said, the water looked really dirty. Yeah, it did. That's all that's left. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah, so, so it was basically like this. <laughs> no, it's like this. <laughs> Times two. So two yeah. cones makes a blanket. Yeah, and it's a good size blanket. Now, the um, pattern actually called for a worsted weight. So these two together was more of a DK. So I just added more onto the end and kind of went with a gauge that I liked the feel of. Yeah. So yeah. And it's, I'm really happy with it. It's, it's amazing. It's beautiful. So, yeah. so that's pretty good. Cause you started that, like you finished that very quickly. I did. I did. My husband was laughing cause I carried it wherever I went. He's like, Oh, we're going to go out. You're bringing your blankie. <laughs> so yeah, it was always with me and it's just, you know, you can pick up a few row or two and it just starts to yeah. add. So yeah, mm, it was good. I'll show you my blankie in a bit. It's not finished. It'll be a long time before it's finished. So after hats, I also, um, I, I was going to use these for gifts. I don't know if I will, um, but I knit, I just wanted something again, fast and easy. So worsted and stuff was on my mind. So I knit these headbands. These ends are there. Oh, that's that pretty. Yeah. So it's just, um, I didn't use a pattern. I think it's 20 stitches and then there's garter on each side and then um, and then pearls and then the cable is four by, it's eight, so four and four. So it's an eight stitch cable. And I'll, I'll write out down the details in my Ravelry page, but there are a lot of patterns for a wide cabled headband that are on Ravelry. So I would you know, just pick one of those. Um, and this yarn is Wonderland Yarns. Again, that I, this I, I got um, in Florida or Myrtle Beach. This was from Myrtle Beach. It's the yarn shop in Myrtle Beach. So it's Wonderland Yarns. It's the March Hair um, worsted weight base and the colorway is salt and pepper tea time salt and pepper number 163 anyways Ready. so I have I had two skeins of it so I've already I've done two headbands and I haven't weighed them but there's still some left and then I have this which I might make a hat out of this this would be a cute olive and jack hat as well mm -hmm. uh, or the sidewinder, like it would be, yeah. So again, really super fast knitting, right? And because there was times I would just be sitting in mom's room with her and I'd, you know, put on a podcast or something with my earbuds and I'd just sit and knit with her and, um, or put the TV on or whatever. And so these were really fast and big because <laughs> if I'm doing something detailed, I have to pay attention. So this was pretty, pretty uh, simple enough that I could, could just knit while I'm watching something. Do you have any other FOs? I don't. Okay, I'll keep going. I only have a few more. They're socks. I have two pairs of socks. And so the first is Old Whip. This was <laughs> way back, like a couple of years. Um, I had started this, uh, I had two projects from yarn that I bought from Heaven is Handmade that I would take when we went to knit night there because I like to bring yarn that I bought from the store if I if I can and uh, to support the store but also um, if someone else is there and they say oh what are you knitting with then I could say oh I bought this here <laughs> so this was actually yarn dyed by Blue Water Fiber Arts who's here in Sarnia Sonia and she had a, a trunk show at Heaven is Handmade a couple years ago and I picked up the main color is called Koi Pond. And the orange is a mini skein from Leo and Roxy, just a random mini skein that I picked up at a show, their first show, I think a couple years ago. And the pattern is called Slip Stitch Lines. It's by La Maison de Saba. It's a free pattern on Ravelry. And you're just slipping a stitch every so many stitches for a few rows. 
Is that showing up good? Yeah, no, it looks yeah. good. Good color. This is the exact, like I have great lighting here today. So, so I finally pulled those out. I had one sock done and I finished them. I figured we're not going to knit night and I needed something. I just wanted to get these whips done. I needed sock needles because I've cast on about five other socks. So I needed more needles. And then my second pair is just uh, an ankle sock. And this is yarn that I bought from Adrian. So it was, she had finished socks and had leftovers and we did a swap. So this is by Into the World, W-H-I-R-L-E-D. And I'll, all the details will be in the drop down, but it's Into the World and the color was Wawa. And I don't know if they're dying this colorway anymore because it was Adrian's and then it was mine. Um, but it's really fun. There's lots of great, there's like burgundy, turquoise, plums, and gold, green. And then I did the, the cuff is a two by two rib. I call it Noelle's fancy rib, but it's two by two rib that I just cable the knit stitches every fifth okay. row. And then I'm really back into the heel flap and gusset. I think I said that last time, right? Mm -hmm. So I just did the, you just do the flap and the, and the turn. And then when you, when you go to start the decreases, just pick up your main color again. So I did that. And this is Teal You a Secret by Leo and Roxy. That's my, all my FOs. I have almost as many whips. <laughs> right? That I'm showing. I never mind all the ones. Yeah. I don't have a lot of whips because I've been trying to not have as many. Um, but that's cool. I have a well, you need a whole blanket. Well, I do have a couple though. Like it's not, it's not, I'm, I'm not totally yeah. monogamous. I still get around. <laughs> yeah. I, my mom, we all knit the European road trip shawl and my mom wears hers so much that she bought yarn to make it. And she's just, she's kind of lost her knitting mojo for a while. So I offered to, because I'm in a stage right now where if I, I, don't require a lot of thought for my knitting. I'm happy. So I'm doing a road trip shawl for my mom in the um, whole super soft in a wool for the winter. So it's this vibrant, like it's like a cobalt blue. It's a really pretty blue. And I'm really liking, now I've made one for Adrian with the coast, which is the wool and cotton. So this is one for my mom in 100% wool. So we'll see how it turns out. So far the drape is really nice and kind of yeah so yeah what's the color name of that one do you know you know what i don't remember what it was if you give me a second i will get the the i'll be right back this is one of the ones that oh, we wow. ordered from holst last year so she wanted to do that and i think it's called cobalt so it's called cobalt blue <laughs> Yeah, so so that's the European road trip by Espas Trico. Yeah, yeah, and it's uh, and we should we should say that you can now get um, holst garn, um, a oh, couple of get, different yeah. bases at Little Red Mitten. Little Red Mitten, yes, yeah. that order by the cone and by the um, I think yeah they have this oh. list the cakes right yeah yeah yeah. Awesome. Um, now, do they only have, have the Super Soft and the Coast? They, I think the cones are Super Soft, and I think they have the Titicaca, which is the has alpaca, and I think they have another base that has the silk in it. Okay. I, they have a couple of bases, so it would be on their website, um, and yeah. Yeah, no, that's good. And the, there's like 1,500 meters, I think, in the cones. In the cones, well, it's it's 500, they say it's 500 grams in okay. the cones, which would be 10 cakes. The only thing is, this one is 650 grams. Yeah. Like I weighed it. So even if you take off the amount for the little cardboard thing, you're still have a little yeah. bit above 500. So yeah, it's kind of, they're nice. They're like it's a really affordable yarn with for the yardage you get. Yep. Yeah. Well, I started a blanket. 
I love this, that. Blanket. I started this this fall and it's um this was comfort knitting and just you know something I could pick up and put down and easy easy I went back to some crochet I haven't crocheted for a long time so this is the granny blanket I think it's just called the granny blanket uh, by yarn inspirations design studio so it is free online and there are many there's like a lot of stripey ones but I didn't know how many um, how big I wanted it like I didn't know how much to cut how many how my how big to make my chain right and so I thought if I do I didn't want to do a square because I want it to be rectangular so this one is actually for a rectangular blanket and then that way I can stop when it's the size I want so <laughs> I started in the middle oh this is probably the wrong side hang on all the ends I have You're giving me nightmares I'm looking at all the wet those ends going oh my gosh <laughs> There are a lot because like some people will do it and just use up a scrap until it runs out and then, you know, so what I was doing was um, doing one color. Sometimes I did two rounds, but doing one color for a round and then sometimes I was able to repeat that color in another round. So I think I only a few times had to change color and sort of mid round, but um, yeah, so I'll kind of show half of it so you can see the color transitions. So it started with my favorite Teal You Secret. And I didn't plan the order other than I would sort of plan the next one or two. So if I was looking at all my scraps and I was working on like a purple, then I'd look for something that had a little bit of purple in it. And then something that had a bit of that color for the next one. So it wasn't really like I sat down and organized them all. Um, just a few, just one or two steps ahead. And it's just worked out. So um, I'm beyond the point where I can use a 10 gram mini for a round. That was somewhere back here. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's, it's, I'm going to have to start changing color mid round if I want to truly use up my scraps, right? But I love it and it's just something that you don't really have to think about. You just keep doing your double crochets all the way around, right? And this is fingering weight. I didn't say that, but the majority of my scraps are fingering weight. Um, so it's fingering weight and I used a 2.75 millimeter crochet hook. I did start on a three millimeter and just started over on a 2.75 it was kind of um i wanted because it's fingering weight like i just wanted to have a little a little tighter gauge so it's it's totally drapey and, and gorgeous but i can't oh it's like a baby blanket size right now like i could kind of cuddle up with this <laughs> but because i changed color so much yes tons of ends crazy do you have another whip i have my friends your oh, friends I I saw this and I bought the pattern eons ago and I thought, oh, they'd be fun to make. So I've made, these are from the, what was it? Imagined landscape pattern, but they, it calls for fingering weight and I didn't have it in me to make them that small. So I made the gnomes. There's this guy <laughs> kind of matches this guy <laughs> and this guy. <laughs> And I have another one that has a black hat and he's going to have the marled bottom. So what I did was I am, I don't like sewing in things. I don't like, so what I did for the arms was I picked up four stitches and then four stitches and knit down and then just kind of finished them off at the end. Um, I did put knots in their hats cause I don't know why. I just thought that was super cute. I had a, my daughter had a hat with one of those in it when she was younger. So I thought they were super cute. So I do have to make them all noses. I have to make four noses. And I kind of like the furry rough beards. So I ended up buying, um, it's only about this thick and it's, I don't know what you would use it for, <laughs> but it sold in the ribbon department of Fabricland. Do you have mm -hmm. the department I mean? And it's all fur. So I think I have white, gray, and I have a little bit of a, a red one. So I think I'm going to do those. But I just Yeah, think, it's, they, they, sell it, they sell it by the yard. It's faux fur yeah, in yeah. strips. So you could make pom-poms with it. Oh, that's, a, that's right? probably what it's for. Because I was like, yeah. what are people using this for? Or for 
for trim, like around a hood yeah. or whatever. That's true. Yeah. So these are my friends. I'll have to, this one's not as far along as these guys. So we got to fix him up with a couple of arms, but it got to the point where my blanket was too big to carry around everywhere. So I started knitting these guys, but then I was at a stage with these guys that I had to bring stuffing. <laughs> so it just got to the point where my husband's like, what are you doing? <laughs> but yeah, but I just think they're so adorable. They are. So they I'll are. Have to finish those up. And then um, my husband's twin sister, and no, they're not identical. Um, she, <laughs> she saw them and she really loved them. So um, they wanted a, a lighter gray and a brighter red. So I scoot, scooted out in town here and got them for her. So I'll have to knit nice. those up. I told her not until after Christmas girlfriend. So she's, yeah. yeah. So Awesome. Mm -hmm. Love them. Oh, they're adorable. I'm, next, I'm going to talk about my sweater next, which I haven't touched for a few months. Because mm -hmm. um, I'm thinking, I'm trying to decide if I went to change colors. So I cast on Lilith by Thea Coleman, and, which is a raglan sweater, but it has this stunning neckline. That one's really pretty. That's really gorgeous. Yeah. See? Oh. So this is Ginger Snap, the, the Lux Worsted. And this color is Griffin. It's yep. a gorgeous teal. Oh, this yarn is just amazing. And then I bought this when we had the pop-up shop for them like over a year ago, <laughs> 2019. So this is their Lux Worsted base. It's 100% Superwash Merino and it's just, oh, it's so nice. And then I bought three colors because they didn't have a sweater quantity in one color, but combined. So I'm going to do like an ombre effect. So the next color is going to be Deco, which is a little bit darker. If I hold them up. So Deco, and then the third color is Magpie. Mm. So it's gonna go like that. I love it. So it's just, I have to check. I don't think I'm anywhere near the armholes yet. So, and then I have to um, figure out where to change colors and how much yardage I have. Some people on their projects repeated this uh, pattern on the bottom hem and I, on the cuffs, I think. So I think I want to do that because it's just beautiful. It is. So beautiful. I want to make sure I have a wide enough bottom hem in this color. Mm -hmm to do that, right? To, to get the, this in and then the ribbing. So I have to pick this up again because I've been neglecting it for a couple of months. I was doing good and then I shut it down. And I am alternating skeins uh, using the helical method. I started that after the lace because of course you don't want to be doing that during lace. And I'm getting great, no pooling or anything like that. So it's looking really good. Gosh, okay, I have to pick this up and knit it. I love this color. Why am I, why have I been ignoring it? I'll do one more. What have I got? I started um, Cozy Up Knits put out a hat and headband pattern. Oh yeah, 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 that one's pretty. Little Pine Tree. Yeah. Oh my gosh. So this is the headband. Okay. And it's double, double thickness. So it's, I'm just, you do a provisional cast on. You do the headband and then this is the inside. So I think I'm almost, almost wide enough to be done. But isn't it just adorable? It's gorgeous. Oops, it keeps flipping up. These pine trees and then it's, it's got us, I used a speckled there. Well, that's pretty. Yeah, so I'm holding fingering double and the speckle in the background is Madeline Tosh um, found pottery. And, and then the darker one, it was a cake I had wound up mm -hmm. and it's not labeled. And I think it's, I think it's a Madeline Tosh color called Panther. Um, but I'm not a hundred percent sure, but it's just a really dark, it looks lighter here than it is, but it's just, yeah, a really nice dark color. So I just love this because one of the samples they had done had the speckled yarn in the background and I love that. So yeah, I gotta finish that. 
And then we'll have a headband. And they're doing a knit along right now for oh, that nice. pattern. So yeah. Okay. And uh, there were some dyers had kits for them and they were beautiful. So I love that. Just love it. Like even the hat I love. Like I should do a hat like that too because it's so adorable. Did and the then, pattern come with both the hat and the headband? Yeah. Oh, nice. And I can't remember if they did mittens as well. I think they did mittens that had, because um, the, the hat has more design on it. And they did mittens that has some of the, just the pattern around it too. So you get, I think you get it all in the one pattern. Well, that's good then. Really good. Yeah. And I'll do one more. I pulled out also another long time project. My vanilla is the new black. Remember when that came out? It's oh, yeah, the yeah. Um, ribbed, I those for my dad. Tail. Yeah. So this, it's vanilla is the new black by Anna Fletcher. And oh, I didn't even write it down here. Oh yeah, I did. Um, so I just did a one by one rib and then the heel is just increases and in ribbing until it's wide enough as your normal heel flop would be pretty much. And then you just do the same turn and decreases and off you go. The, and it, oh, it fits like a dream. It really is like, a, this is an awesome fit. And this would be a really great heel to do in self striping. If you didn't want to do an afterthought heel, um, you don't have to change colors. Like your stripes would get a little off, but you know, the whole flat part would work. So yeah, it's, it's a really comfy heel. It fits me wonderfully. And this is yarn, uh, commercially produced sock yarn. It's Lang Yarns Super Socks color. And uh, they don't give it names, but the color is 901.0165. And it's just a gradient bluish grays. It's really pretty. So my colors. Mm -hmm. Do you have another whip? What are you knitting? Oh. Yeah. Right. <laughs> okay. No, I don't. You know what? I don't right now. I have a couple that I'm going to start, but I have to decide what to start. <laughs> okay. Well, I have one and this is, oh, this was a rather knit along. Because remember I did the Christmas socks, the timber yarns. Um, oh yeah, 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 the, yeah, yeah. Okay. Where I did color work in the stripes. Yeah. Well, so I started the strand, the stripes knit along. Yeah. And I'm using, I had posted one or two pictures on Instagram. I have them going on separate needles, but they're at the same point now because I didn't know what I wanted to do next for a pattern. So I'll just show one, but I have two socks at the same exact same stage. So this is the serendipity color by timber yarns. And I use just a natural undyed every, wherever it looked good, every two or three stripes, I just went with it and made a, put a little color work pattern in there. So um, there are a few people who've joined me on the knit along, which is fantastic. Uh, it's a great way to just monkey around with some color work if you want. Um, the only thing is if you, with, if you don't do an afterthought heel, your stripe width changes the number of rows because it gets skinnier. Like look right here, right? Where you do the heel, the stripes get a little skinnier. So all I did is I just didn't do color work in those thinner stripes. And then after a couple of them, it was kind of back to almost the normal number of rows per stripe. So then I just did like, if you look at this pink and white row, I just did stripes because then it didn't matter what my row count would be. And then now it's pretty, I'm still doing a few more decreases, but it's pretty close to back to normal, so. I love the design in the gray, but I was just thinking that would be really neat to make it all stripes like that. It would, be easy. It's just two, 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 right? Color one, two, color two, two. Yeah. And, um, so you just, I know I have people asking me, you know, where do you get patterns? There's a few uh, things to think about when you're doing this. Depending on the sock yarn you're using, different dyers may have stripes of different row count, like it, and your gauge may change how many rows you get, the size of sock you're knitting. So it's it's good to know that, like, or knit a couple of rows first and then see what your how many rows you get per stripe, and then basically 
you're going to get, if you add a color work in, you're going to get an extra one or two rows of your main color because you're alternating stitches with a different color. So it's just, you kind of have to do a little bit of math and figure out, okay, if I use a pattern that has four, re four rows in the pattern, that should work. Because like most of them are at least four rows of color. And you're going to end up with probably at least five because you're adding another color in. So you have to do a little bit of finagling like that. And you know what, if you run out and don't finish a pattern, well, who cares? <laughs> I mean, it's still going to just look fun. Yeah. So there are, I did mention in our Ravelry thread, there are some free patterns that have color work. I mean, basically you could, any pattern that you have that has a color work chart, just, you know, sometimes you can pick a section or pick, you know, pick a couple rows. And as long as it's, I'd say four to five rows in the repeat, it should work. And I did hand draw on graph paper. I charted out a bunch of designs. So I'm going to take pictures of them because I had done that before with my Christmas ones. I'm going to take pictures of them and put them in our Ravelry thread. I haven't done yet. I haven't done that yet. And then there was um, one lady asked if there was a tutorial. So no, this is not a learn how to do color work knit along because that's, we don't have tutorials for that. So I'd say, you know, there are so many and I recommended Arnon Carlos because they have tons of videos. Um, mm -hmm. If you I haven't done color work before, I'm not teaching anyone that, but just giving you some inspiration and encouragement to give it a try. I think also it's not necessarily um, a beginner's thing because you have to do the math. So you yeah. have to kind of, I mean, I wouldn't pick it as my first pair of socks, but yeah. it would be good to yeah. understand the concept behind it without the yeah. appointment of a sweater. If yeah. you make a mistake, and even things like, it would be a really good um, place to learn the importance of a lifeline. Yep. Well, all that works, Absolutely. Right? Like it, it would be an amazing yeah. learning tool for that. I need to pick these up and keep going because I want to get them finished. I think they're gorgeous. And thanks to everyone who's uh, joined me on the Knit Along. It's lots of fun. Do we want to talk acquisitions? Not everyone wants to stick around and see um, Yarn Hall. And there is a lot, like at least I have a lot, because it's been so long since we podcast. And like I said, I was doing a bit of stress shopping. However, there are, um, there are some interesting stuff. There are some interesting things to see. And I'd say especially... There's something Lisa's going to open that she hasn't seen yet. So I'd, I'd love for people to stick around and watch that. But, but Lisa, I think you should open your parcel right now. My parcel? I'm allowed to? Yeah. It's all been confirmed? You're allowed to. Okay, so You're allowed to, yeah. A little backstory. I ordered something from Timber Yarns. And my daughter, they have this rule, my husband and my daughter, anything that comes in the house after a certain date gets grabbed and wrapped so I like for example I ripped my jeans and I only have two pairs of jeans left so I ordered jeans well they're all under the tree wrapped and I can't have them until Christmas and so I'm doing a lot of laundry so anything that's come in has gotten wrapped so this parcel came in I was tackled they took it from me and they wrapped it so yeah I want to see you open it so right? it's from Dawn so they weren't gonna give it to me and I'm like Dawn wants to see Ooh. Oh my god, it's like it's like my colorway. Oh my word. Ooh, Take it out of the bag. Take it out of the bag and then I'll I'll tell you what it is because you don't even know it's new. New? Oh seriously? It's worsted. There it is. Yeah. Oh. So this is the debut. You're the first person seeing it. It's Timber Yarns self-striping worsted. It's not in her shop yet. It's, she said, probably February. Um, mm. It'll be coming. So this was a, a test run. And I think it's all, does she give it a name? Oh, uh, <laughs> she spelled my name wrong. <laughs> Just kidding. Oh. It says grayscale. <laughs> oh, Grayscale. So gray it's, scale. Uh, I think there's at least four, it's different shades of gray. So, I'm, I'm going to make and mittens. And it's worsted. It, I'm making mittens. Yeah, exactly. There is a worsted um, mini skein. Yeah. So yeah. if you wanted to use it for 
cuffs or whatever you want. Okay. You can do worsted socks too. Yeah. yeah if you did mittens, you can use it for the cuffs and the thumbs. Yeah. And put a little, or put fingertips in the black. Mm. Okay. So I'm going to tell the story of how this came about. Okay. Um, there was someone on Instagram who used timber yarns and knit a mitten in the storm. Actually, a couple of people have now. There was, so, I think she did it in storm. I can't remember her name, um, but Heather shared it. And so I saw these color work mittens and I, I thought they were her sock yarn held double. And so immediately I was like, I'm going to, I totally have to do that. Yeah. Right? Then I, I was talking to Heather about it because I said, oh, I want to do this and I'm going to knit you know, mittens with the fingering held double and Lisa was bored with it. And we were thinking, oh, let's start a, a knit along in January, right? And maybe we still will. We'll come back in January and think about that. Like just a mitten knit along. Because we were supposed to do the color work mittens and yeah. we haven't gotten around to that because for both of us, life got in the way to do something more involved. <laughs> so then I was talking to Heather and I said, I'm going to do this. Like I'm going to knit your mittens held double and... And uh, we got talking about self story And I, I think I asked her, like, have you thought about doing worsted? And she had, and she had worsted. And so she said, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do some. And I said, would you do, I asked her to do one for you. Because we were going to do a knit along. Mm -hmm. So it's coming. I don't, I know she's got some releases lined up in January. So uh, she said probably February, but we'll see. Maybe she can do a few colorways earlier so we can have a knit along you know what i'm thinking of some of the really amazing colorways she already has which would be great in worsted i know yeah like work sock the brick yeah. the mortar um what else oh and the, the uh, can you imagine serendipity yeah like this or, in or, worsted? Canada? or oh, canada or canada hey yes. he's another one <laughs> i didn't bring it into the room but i had so what i'm gonna do mittens in is royal city because I love the colors in it. And I actually started. And so we found out later that the woman who did the mittens, she actually used a fingering weight mitten pattern. Yeah. She didn't hold it double. Because when I was knitting it double, inevitably the strands start to get mismatched just because of the, you know, you're holding two strands, it happens. So then my stripes weren't starting in the same spot. And it was, you know, when it's only an inch, it's not a big deal, but then it would be like a little more. So all I did was I just kind of left a loop mm -hmm. of the yarn that it was, you know, going too Wrong. fast yeah. and got them together again. And I was just going to weave it in on the inside. Right. Um, yeah. But it turned out that, yeah. So I was so excited to do this. I actually have two balls for mittens and they're double stranded. So I'm still going to do it with oh. the Christmas ones. Yeah. That she has. So yeah. Yeah. It's just that you have to be aware that that will happen and just, yeah, you'll have to just adjust every so often. But my mitten was too small. So I tore it out and I'm, I've added some stitches and I've just started casting on again. So I have nothing to show, but I think when we come back in January, I'm going to show mittens. some examples. I'm going to be knitting yeah. mittens. Did you get some of this too? No. Oh, I got to go. I got to knit. See ya. <laughs> Everything's done. <laughs> it's just, it's just oh, for you. I got to knit mittens. But isn't that awesome? It's yeah, awesome. fabulous. Um, check out, like, if you're not following Timber Yarns on Instagram, uh, then, you know, you should, because then you'll know when she re actually releases this, or keep an eye on her uh, shop. And, of course, we'll be letting you know. We'll share when she releases it. But I think it'd be fun to come back in January with both of us and have some examples of, of the mittens yeah, and then kick off uh, Knit Along. So you, I know you ordered this too, Lisa, and I think it's under your tree, <laughs> but I got the Timber Yarns Timber Gnome. Is that which, the gnome? Um, yeah. No. And then it comes with, I got the, the teal mini. So yeah. it's, it's a, a very greenish teal. Mm -hmm. There's pink, red, gray, and white. I think there's two grays. Uh, she, I believe she's still dyeing this. And then look at the little progress keeper is a little gnomey and then she put out the next week or so um kitty just called kitty because sophie had this fabric so it's very similar colors can you see the kitties they're all in like scarves and and they're knitting is there a knitting one look at this guy he's knitting you know, yeah i love her so kitty kitty is the same 
tones, but there's more pink and red, and then just a little bit of teal, whereas this one just had like one pink stripe. So um, they complement each other, but I love them both. So I got the kit for this one because I'm like, I gotta get, one of them's gotta be a bag. And I, I lucked out and got one because they, they sold really quick. And yes. I love Delphina's bags. Look at this. It's like a little box bag, the zipper. And so Sophie's bag making business is featured in the fall winter edition of Vogue Knitting magazine. I know, right? So yeah, so if you're flipping through that, there is a one page spread featuring Buku out of Toronto. I think they're out of Toronto, Montreal, Toronto. And then, um, and Delfina, which is pretty awesome. So way to go guys, way to go Ontario. Go Ontario. In, uh, yeah, in Vogue Knitting Magazine. So these were two sort of special, I didn't need any more sock yarn, but these colors just, I had to. And then look at, oh, look at the Progress Keeper. I don't know if you can see this one. It says, oh shoot, it keeps slipping on me. It says cat person. <laughs> I'm totally a cat person. Speaking of that, also sad in my life, the week before mom passed away, we had to say goodbye to my oldest cat, Abby. So that was hard. And it was kind of like, I didn't even really have time to process Abby because mom was really deteriorating that, you know, it was now, near the end. You have to tell everybody, Abby's the one that used to sleep behind us. Yeah, Abby's the black and white, you know, our, uh, producer. our uh, producer that used to sleep and snore on the bench behind us in our old setup. I know, and then, and then just like a week and a half ago, the other two cats, like three days apart, both made trips to the vet for digestive issues. Let's just leave it at that. So Merry Christmas to us. There are vet bills under our tree. <laughs> this is the part where we're going to talk about stash, but we've got some interesting and new things to show you. So we hope you'll stick around because there's some, you know, a few interesting things, not just another skein of fingering white yarn. So Lisa. Okay, okay. so I purchased this when we first moved in and I really love it. It is, um, it's by Wild Strand and uh, Wild Strands. She's on uh, Instagram as Wild Strand and she has an Etsy shop. So I, the reason I love this is it keeps all of my knit, my little chai goos organized and it's pretty. So it's made it's really out nice. of a wax, wax cotton. It's got a short little, I thought of the pocket went all the way down, but it stops right here, which is fabulous because then you don't lose your cords. So all your cords stay put. And it keeps me somewhat organized. And of course, it's buffalo plaid. It was a toss up between the love buffalo it. plaid and the camo, but you know. Love it. I love that red. Yeah. And I have, um, this was a gift to me from our friend Sandy a few months ago. It's, it was, at the time it was brand new in at Little Red Mitten. So it's the slub, they call it the Moon Rock Slub by Full Moon Fibers. And this was a custom colorway they dyed called the Mitten for Little Red Mitten. So the Mitten stocks a few of their bases and they have other colorways of the slubby yarn as well. And the Mitten is also dyed on other bases as well. Uh, I just can't remember off the top of my head which ones. Um, but it's really pretty and I don't know what I'm gonna do with it yet. Uh, I might pair it with something, I'm not totally sure, but that's cool. Let's see, I don't have any of this slubby yarn, so it's the first time for me trying it. It's interesting. And so, and thank you very much, Sandy. That was really, just really nice and thoughtful of you to send me that. Um, and I also have something else new that you're starting to see dyers dying on this. Some of are calling it a zebra stripe or, you know, zebra yarn. Um, it's, this particular base is by Will You Knit and it has been dyed by Yarn Indulgences and it is 100% Peruvian Highland wool. Um, this is a skein of fingering, and this colorway is called Slushy. I love that colorway. I gorgeous. love it, love it, love it. Yeah, and uh, it would, like you were saying, Lisa, this would be great for like doing color work. You'd get a really cool effect. Mm -hmm. um, and I also bought a skein of fingering in, this is just a one of a kind, Marl. But it's got some really cool autumn, autumnal, twilighty colors. And I bought three skeins of this Marl Night Sky and the Worsted Base. 
That's pretty too. So can you see? Yeah, gorgeous blues, teals, purples, greens. Lovely. So again, uh, that's Yarn Indulgences. She's an Ontario dyer, and we'll put her website in our details down below. And Lisa, you have some yarn? Um, I bought this from Holst. I wanted to try it for a while now. It's the Guy Long Wool with Cashmere, and it is really super soft, and it's really nice. And I got enough for a sweater if I marl these two colors together. And I know you're really surprised because awesome. it's gray. It's a light gray and dark gray, but... I'm, I've been dying to try it for a while now, and I thought, eh, might as well. So yeah, that's... Those two, those two colors together will probably give you a heathered look, because they're, they're close yeah, see, in that's, tone. That's the one thing when you do order from Holst, or you get Holst, they only come in one, it only comes in one weight, fingering, or lace, because they're, um, yeah. this, what is it? TT Yeah, it is a lace weight, but... Yeah, I usually mix them up. So I got the Galaxy. That's a surprise for everybody because that one's definitely not gray. Because I Gorgeous. had this from an order, I think, a year ago. And I was going to mix the two together to make a sweater. So yeah, so I got this color together and I have this top color together. So the Titty Kaka and the Super Soft? Yeah, and the Super Soft. So I'm just going to mix them. This one is called Marlin. And this one is Galaxy. And this one is called Slate. And that one's called Slate. <laughs> so I just, nice. there's a couple of sweaters. I, it calls for the mohair and I thought it'd be nice with the alpaca. So we'll see how it goes. Mm. What yeah, you got? I like it. Well, I had signed up a few months ago for the Leo and Roxy, um, the Christmas Yarn Club. So it was just oh. one month. Yeah, oh, that's pretty. So it's got the red. It's a really nice cherry red and the turquoise. And so that's just the name of it, the Christmas Yarn Club. And then this is a speckled that goes with it. And it came with a few goodies. Uh, well, I don't have them right here, but there were a few goodies and there was a little coupon code for a future purchase. And, um, oh, nice. Yeah, really nice. So I have that because the next few are Christmassy themed. I, um, I just got this. Red. I love Indeed. the teal and red. It's, mm. Do you see a theme going on here? Because check this out. This I just, just arrived. It's Rose Hill Yarns. And this is a DK weight. Because um, mm -hmm. I've been kind of, I, no, I don't have a lot of DK. So I did order a bunch of DK. So this is a DK weight and their holiday peppermint colorway. So there's this red, uh, pink, the speckled, and then a mini of the turquoise. Love it. So that's Rose Hill Yarns. And I had also ordered some Christmas yarn from Polka Dot Creek. So this was a sock set. The main color is Vintage Christmas Card. So I already wound it up because I was going to knit some, I have a sock pattern in mind. That's pretty. There. So you I can like see the speckles. That. Yeah. And then there were two minis that came in this set. So Brick. Oh, that's pretty. And Moss. Oh, which one yeah. to pick? There. I know. Gorgeous. Then I also, another Christmas colorway from Fireweed Fiber Co. So she's a Winnipeg dyer. I think she's a little new on the scene. This is called Deck the Halls, and it's so fun. It's like got Christmassy green, lime green, and then there's like pink and blue speckles. Isn't that cute? Reminds me of a decorated Christmas tree. It's, I just love it. It's so fun. So I ordered that from Fireweed and I also ordered two mini skein bundles just because I can use them in my blanket or whatever. I could have some fun. So this, this is the Sweet Pea Sock mini set and it's just mystery pot. So there was just bundles with assorted colors. So these colors were in this bundle. Mm -hmm. You can kind of see there's a multi here. And then I ordered another bundle. Actually, this has the same multi, because again, they're whatever she throws into a bundle. And there's kind of like a blue, purple, green. This green would look great. Oh no, it's different greens. Never mind. Um, but yeah, super fun. So I just thought those mini bundles were kind of cute. So I ordered from Little Red Mitten. Nice. Actually, I was, did I pick this up when I was there or did I order it? I think I was there. 
we had a chance a couple of weeks ago to go. So um, anyways, it's from Leo and Roxy. Quartz, which is the prettiest pale pink. And Meredith. My friend. <laughs> and I, I picked up a skein. I have some other darker gray DK that I could yep. use. I thought this with the dark gray would make that, if I use it for that uh, headband, make another one. It'd be really cute. Or even make the hat. And then this is uh, Malabrigo Rios because it's just always good to have Malabrigo Rios in your stash. And this is Cirrus Gray 845. So it's just a dark, it's got a kind of bluey gray tones. This would actually also look good with the quartz, right? But this is the worsted. So, so I got those. Very cool. Anything else from you? Um, no? I want to show my mittens. Do we have time to see my mittens that I bought? Yeah. Okay, so yeah. We were at Bur um, Burger Rebellion picking up the you know, takeout. And they actually had some vendors there. And there was a lady that made mittens out of recycled um, sweaters. Now, as a knitter, we all have that sweater that someone gives back to you because they've put a hole in it or whatnot. I know that they usually bring them back to me. And I was thinking this would be a great way to use those. Mm -hmm. Right? Like it, it, and even things like my daughter's got tons of sweaters that she doesn't fit in anymore. And I'm thinking if I shrunk them, I can make some mittens if she would let me because they're actually in a box, a keepsake like, box. But yeah. So I felt them first and then. Yeah. Yeah. So I just thought they were cool. super cute, the fancy knot. Yeah, so, yeah. they are. Awesome. I bet they're nice and warm too. They are. Yeah. Okay, well, oh, do you know who, who the maker was if she has a store for those mittens? I don't, but I think I have a business card. I'll see if I can, and I'll okay. take a picture to send to you with the picture. Okay. Business card. We'll put it in the, if we have it, we'll put it in the drop down list. I know there's, a, there's, a, I know of at least two people in Sarnia that do those. You said there's a pattern available to make there's them? There's patterns available online. If you put sweater mint, mittens in DIY, they'll set, it'll set up a pattern. I just thought, you know what? I mean, you could probably t contact the people making it and send them the sweaters. But I just thought sometimes there's so many memories as a knitter connected to a sweater that it would be nice to kind of bless you. <laughs> Keep it, right? So that was my thought process. So yeah. Love it. Okay. Well, we should wrap it up because I have an appointment to go to. Um, it was nice to see you, Lisa. No, it's so nice to see you too. I miss you so much. I know. Mm -hmm. so, someday we'll be road tripping. I know, right? For the next month. Ontario's going back into lockdown. I know, month, right? So yeah. But we've been living that way already. Like really. It's, it's not a huge change for us. But well, yeah, 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 it's not a huge change for us either, except for um, my daughter will be home. So, so, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well. All right. Well, um, happy until knitting. next time. Yeah, yeah happy, happy knitting. knitting. Stay safe. Make time to make something. Yeah. And Everybody we'll see you again fun. soon. Yeah. <laughs> happy knitting. We'll see you later. Take care. Thanks.